Good morning once again, and uh, still thank you so much for keeping it at UBC. Now it is Good Morning Uganda, and it is GMU Agenda where we bring you a very important topic of the day. Now today we'll be looking at uh, enhancing exclusive and sustainable transport, of course, which falls under urban planning. Now for us in the studio, we have uh, Amanda Davidano, who's also a lecturer of urban and regional planning at Makere University. She's also a very professional and passionate person about planning, who has also done quite a number of the same in her field. Of course, her passion towards this has driven her in the same field. And of course, now she is with us in studio. You're welcome, Amanda. Thank you, Phyllis. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to have you. Thank you. Robert, good morning once again. <laughs> good morning. Robert, I'm excited to see you, meanwhile. Yes. <laughs> good morning, Robert. Uh, we used to work together, so <laughs> it is not when you see a former workman, of course, yeah, there's excitement. I can imagine. Mm. So, Amanda, before we dwell into the particular topic, now, the passion you have for planning, uh, where do you draw this sort of... It's, 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 it's something that one would say it's for men, engineers, mm -hmm. and all these things. Where do you draw your passion? I think it's just uh, professional to think about everyone when you're a planner. All right. So in terms of mobility, it affects everybody, a child, a disabled person, women, men, the elderly. So my mind thinks that everybody has to be treated equally in terms of design. That's oh. where my passion comes from. And I wouldn't want to be unable to move in my city when I'm an old woman. And I'm going to get old. Where yeah. will I be in this be city? In the city? So, I would, no, I would like to stay in the city. City life is good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, I would like to be safe. And so, yeah. I'm kind of thinking about myself as well. My children, my uh, neighbors, my friends. Yeah. So, that's the deeper passion that I have. For, for planning and all this. Yeah. And I think that that's quite important. It's also quite patriotic, I must say. But now, there's a project implementing creative methodological innovations for exclusive sustainable transport planning. Inclusive, yeah. What is that? Um, this project is about planning for everybody. Mm. It's about uh, focusing uh, on vulnerable groups, the majority road users. Right. Um, inclusiveness is about all people, children, like I said, the elderly, everybody in the urban realm in terms of mobility. Right. Um, as most African countries get so urbanized. There are several aspects that uh, are running out of control, like housing is getting so crowded, nature is being affected, yeah. um, the poor are getting desperate, uh, the rich are having uh, leakages and inconveniences because you are, people are spending more uh, in terms of travel times, etc. Road safety pops up because transportation is one of the major aspects um, that come up with urbanization. The, the intensity increases, the demands increase. So the pressure is upon governments to make sure that they cope, but also the public to make sure that they can manage to move safely. Um, unfortunately, people are affected the most are the poor, the mm -hmm. children. Why? Um, poor people usually have no many choices. For instance, they are forced to walk. Um, I don't think that all the people that walk in Kampala, the 60% walking population, I don't think it's out of choice. Okay. They are stuck. Okay. So when people are stuck, they become vulnerable. They, are, they become desperate. To whatever is available. Yeah. And they, they are at a risk. For instance, if there are no walking facilities that are safe, they are exposed to higher risks of being knocked. And because they are already poor, if let's say the head of a household is knocked down in an accident, it means that that family is going to most likely get even poorer. For instance, children may drop out of school. So that increases their level of vulnerability. Amanda, when you talk about uh, including everybody in planning, for example, let's take, uh, let's look at our cities. Of course, Kampala, but also there are many other cities that are coming up, Mbale, Mbara, and they need proper planning. But we've not seen the city planners so much plan for the groups you're talking about as vulnerable groups. We always see things of a road for vehicles. And what happens, pedestrians are just given 
a walkway very, very, very uh, tiny, and they yeah. always be competing with the motorcycles and all this. But, but do we see your idea sailing through as a priority to our yeah. planners? I think it's not only in Uganda mm. that this is happening. Okay. It's happening in most African countries. Mm. It's also in Asian countries. Mm -hmm. uh, the pressure is so big that that's why we need to come in as academicians, researchers, mm. policymakers, and we each make a contribution to support uh, this kind of change. Mm. And that's why this project um, actually started. Okay. Because we realize that there's a bit of a gap between mm. research and practice. Uh, communication is not really well focused on, yeah. it's not inclusive enough. Transport projects like uh, infrastructure designs oh. and implementation don't seem to actually um, rhyme with people's perceptions. Oh. Like the walkway may be there, but the motorists will use it, yeah. the, the border border will use yeah. it. Yeah. So now with this kind of research, which are funded by the British Academy by the way, uh -huh. we discovered that there's a way transport planners, urban planners, mm -hmm. can be more inclusive in the design, but also uh, get connected to the people that they're planning for. Yeah. So this kind of change is happening, although it's not happening at the rate that it should happen. Mm -hmm. So we would like to focus on um, everybody in terms of uh, um, accessibility. Mm -hmm. It's about fairness. Mm -hmm. It's about equity. Mm -hmm. You see, we were all... Um, born, created, equal. Mm. But the environment brings those differences. Oh. And now in terms of urban mobility, if the environment is hostile to the poor, to the children, oh. Oh, yeah. this is going to make an, uh, uh, a situation whereby the society is unequal oh, okay. by design. Uh -huh. Because if you, can't, if you can't safely access education oh. and the government policy is that all should go to school, oh. but as you go to school, you are knocked down. So which parent would like to risk? Probably they can say no. Since there is no safety in my, sis in my mm. city, yeah. mm. I would rather keep my child at home. At home. Mm. And I get, I get him or her engaged in uh, domestic activities. I train him at home. And, and yeah, I don't want to lose my child. To be honest, this is the real uh, center of our project, the mm. vulnerable groups in the city. And those mm. are the majority. OK. Yeah. Now, when did this project uh, start or introduced in Uganda for um, that much? It was in Uganda and Kenya, and we started about two years ago. Right. But real work on ground, that's why it has that uh, component of implementing. Mm -hmm. It was a research uh, project, but actually hands-on. We went on the ground and we implemented. Uh, from about uh, April or February last year, we had a team of uh, creative experts that uh, we put together. And I was the coordinator of uh, the Ugandan team. So Kenya and Uganda have so many similarities. Yeah, yeah. Nairobi traffic is as crazy, even worse. Yeah, and then we true. have uh, pedestrians having similar troubles. Mm. The disabled people, similar troubles. Mm. We have the quality of public space yeah. disappearing, whereby you, you, are, you feel you are not safe as you walk, as you ride, as you come out of a taxi. So everybody um, was it's competing for yeah. this very small space. Yes. But everybody on the team was trying to find how creatively they can communicate these complexities in terms of uh, inclusiveness. So we had several activities, and we had sites that we worked right. on, which we'll discuss later. Yeah. And, and yeah, we, we are closing the project, but we are satisfied. This there, is a good approach. There's some achievements. Yeah. yeah. So, so what, what, what is your role in this particular uh, project? My role? Of course, as a professional, as an urban planner, yeah. and as a passionate uh, person in, in urban mobility, is to coordinate the events mm -hmm. that, that have to be uh, carried out. Yeah. Um, being an academician, and this is a research-based uh, project, I had to identify the mm -hmm. key elements that we had to focus on, mm -hmm. and also to interact with uh, the planners, planning authorities, KCCA, mm -hmm. Uh, Minister of Works, uh, Minister of Lands, uh, Uganda Road Fund. We in, I, we made sure that we designed um, uh, events to engage them, so that we 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 know their perception about uh, urban mobility okay. for all. Because now, for all means that 
by design mm. you don't forget any user mm. no matter their social status okay. mm -hmm. yes um, and also for all means that <coughs> it should be um, safe if it is safe for a rich person who is mm. driving it should be safe for a poor for a person, poor person well. who is mm. working so it's about seeking a balance because everybody's contribution towards the economy and society matters. Okay. Maybe take us uh, briefly through these activities because one would wonder uh, fairness and striking balance in some of these things is not an easy task it's not because you find already we have all designs. These are roads that are already there. Even when we want new roads, the challenge we face is where do you construct these new roads? You're passing through people's arcades, passing through and all this, so may that brings me to see how, what activities, yes. if really we can have something to be proud of later on. So the first activity mm -hmm. was trying to link um, our work with the existing related projects. And the mm -hmm. first one, you can guess, is one where I was involved, the one of Namirembe Road, mm. the non-motorized transport project. Yes. You have realized what's going on now, the construction works mm -hmm. and the change that is happening is, or is coming. Um, so we piloted kind of that pilot mm. to engage the public mm. so that we assess if they really understand and appreciate the, the intention of that project. Mm. So in, a, in essence, we supported uh, KCCA mm. that is, ho is uh, 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 implementing that project <coughs> to help people understand it best. So we had events like place making, what we call place making, it's an urban uh, development terminology, whereby people can reimagine their spaces, their street spaces. And, and we went on the streets, went on Namembe Road, Loom Street, and people, the general public came, asked questions, they painted, they started uh, discussing how they prefer their street space to be like. Mm -hmm. Uh, like uh, but the borders can complain and say, oh, the trucks, trailers take mm. away our space. The pedestrians also mm. mention something, they write down, they paint. People even don't know how to interpret the traffic lights. Yeah. Mm. So it, you, you realize that actually the public should be engaged more if plans are to be meaningful. Okay. Mm. Yeah, so pedestrians come and also say uh, the walkways uh, are not good enough. Uh, mm. the, the potholes, you know, when it rains, the blood. So people start discussing these issues and painting what they would want their city to be like, to look like. Right. And this is a good way we realize that uh, urban planners, planning authorities should adopt and make sure that there is no big gap between their plans and what the public actually knows. This is why people actually steal these things because their minds mm have not been prepared they to appreciate them. They have not been them. prepared. Yeah. And they don't know that all these things are actually for their own growth, their own benefit, their own safety. Yeah. So that was one that we engaged in, and that is for non-motorized transport project. Um, we also had street art and dance. Oh. We, we, we got people and we, 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 we just set up and people came. Like the day there was an open market, the Sunday market, mm -hmm. people just come and ask, what are you doing? We, mm -hmm. Then we gave them some uh, t-shirts with mm -hmm. safe in my city, which they, we started discussing that everybody matters on the road. Can you respect mm -hmm. other road users? So that is a bit of sensitization. So a bit of mindset mm -hmm. change, mm -hmm. but also focusing on acceptability of plans mm -hmm. and trying to include everyone. Let's it's look at uh, focusing on acceptability of plans. Of course, we know sometimes these plans affect people. They affect businesses. How receptive are people to some of these plans? Because I was looking at the Namilembe Road. I saw a bit of mixed reactions. Yeah. So, I like, So, I mean, how are the public perceptions when you went on ground. Yeah, and, they, and, uh, and maybe uh, just to add on what Robert is saying, I think we, because we, we have basic players, we have the authorities mm. and the people. Uh, maybe did they, how did they receive this? Uh, for, from a couple of, uh, talking to a couple of people, some people are very skeptical, like Uganda, you know, <laughs> you know, mm. and then people are supposed to be like, anyway, whatever comes. But uh, 
what are the reactions of the people and the authorities? The reactions are good. Okay. Mm -hmm. The debate is nice. It's interesting. All right. Yeah. Um, it's expected to be like that everywhere, worldwide, mm -hmm. where they try to introduce uh, that kind of change. Mm. The first people that reject it are the target beneficiaries. True. And after implementation, mm. they are very happy. That's mm. what we have discovered. Mm. So there is a bit of fear. Mm. But for the that would mean there was not good sensitization. There can be good sensitization, and still you'll have sections of the public mm. uh, not really comfortable it, yeah. with, with projects like that. Mm. Uh, because it's quite new to, to discuss things like calf zone, mm. to discuss things like uh, 3D crossing, which you mm. are going to, um, I'm going to tell you about. Mm -hmm. it's, it's something new that people are, are, are hearing uh, something like quality of public space. Where is public space? So they may not understand mm. things like air pollution. Mm -hmm. People fear road accidents, mm. but they don't fear air pollution because they don't get easily mm. uh, in touch with it. They cannot feel yeah. it. But you may fear to be knocked by a border border by a vehicle because, mm. yeah, your leg will be broken instantly or something like that. Mm. But air pollution kills you steadily, slowly. Mm -hmm. You know? So these are issues that people uh, see as abstract mm. and, and not really in touch with, with their daily lives. Mm. So the public perception during this um, the implementation of these activities mm. was really positive. Receptive. And mm. I think we should aim at extending this project so that mm. we keep it running uh, together with the planning authorities mm. and we keep people in touch with the planners and also in line with the plans for them. Mm. That in the long run will change their mindset and the plans will most likely will be accepted with ease. Amanda, okay. these are very good plans. Uh, but one of the challenges we faced in Uganda is once projects come to an end, continuity becomes a problem. Sustainability of these good ideas, that yes. is the end of it, because the funders are pulled out. Yeah. In this project, do we see an element that factored in continuity? Yes, because we actually worked closely with the Minister of Works, that's forever here. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we worked with the KCCA, forever here. We worked with the, the schools, uh, Bat Valley and Buganda Road Primary yeah. School. We have a good relationship that we have established, and we we ignited uh, some kind of thinking towards yeah. this topic. Even some of the creative experts that yeah. we worked with who are doing art, uh, uh, poetry, yeah. storytelling for the children, yeah. they changed their minds about the topic of urban mobility. Yeah. This is This topic affects everybody mm -hmm. but some people don't want to discuss it mm -hmm. so we went to buganda road primary school we went to bat valley primary school you know where bat valley is yes. mm -hmm. in the middle of everything mm -hmm. and crossing bombo road for the children is mm -hmm. such a nightmare that's yeah. true and these children are looking forward to a bright future mm -hmm. they There's wake only up a so early there. exactly mm -hmm. and the time that they have to go to school is the peak time that with our total mm. madness on traffic in terms of traffic mm. actually both going high. and leaving school the time they are leaving school again we yes. are in total Equally madness yes. yeah. exactly mm. so these children are exposed to risks to border borders to mm. motorists to cyclists to all bad things and mm. as a child uh, you fantasize you move while playing we used sure to play yes. while going to school mm. we swing you know yeah. And we talk to each other, but then we are absent-minded and the border border emerges from the other side. Yeah. So we decided to engage the schools, the children. We went there, both schools, uh, taught them what to do. Uh, and they responded telling us what, uh, okay. what, they, what they go through. Oh, yes. They, they said, no, some people don't want to stop for us. Um, sometimes I think I'm going to be knocked, you know? My mother brings me up here, so it becomes really tricky crossing that bombo road, even as a, an able-bodied adult. Okay. It's very, very challenging. Then also Buganda Road. That road is one way, but oh. the children going there usually are coming from the other Different, side of town. Opposite, yes. Yeah, uh, Chivulu side mm -hmm. across. And this is good because education, I mean, everybody mm -hmm. has a right to education. Surely. And when parents have taken this uh, extra step to mm -hmm. send their child to school,
and then road safety affects them yeah. so it has to be a bigger uh, picture that includes everybody cities that uh, think about children yeah. usually are very safe because yeah. everybody else is catered for yeah. so now these children will tell stories about uh, how traffic flows uh, who helps them yeah. you know there are these guard, guides that uh, help them to cross, cross the road yeah so it was um, those activities were really interesting mm. okay uh, now, now, now just ask something before we get into the video amanda and uh, when you look at this particular project uh, one would want to know was it purely a ugandan original uh, besides kenya as you had said that uh, we're looking at kenya but do we see it spreading far from just Kampala, do we have plans to see it in Jinja, the major towns, uh, Entebbe, Mbale, Kabale, and this all we are, we are using Kampala for now? Um, we started with the capitals because the intensity of activities is higher. In, okay. the, in fact, during the project, one child was knocked dead from Buganda Road Primary School. Yeah. And we went to the school and they said, your project is really good. Unfortunately, yesterday we lost a child oh, because of yeah. what you, uh, you were already telling us about. So this project focused on the captors because yeah. of such um, intensive yeah. activities. But the main um, hope that we have is that the planners who are, for example, watching, who will read the papers because we are going to publish this mm -hmm. information and make it public, mm -hmm. they should adopt uh, this new style of, of being creative and, and thinking mm. uh, in an inclusive way for everybody. Yeah. So it, it's in the hope that it yes. will spread and yeah. probably for the next phase, if yeah. we succeed in extending it, we could uh, go outside Kampala. Yeah. But Kenya, it was already um, it's running already well. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, uh, it's still going on, but we're yeah. almost done. Yeah. And it has also helped because they have uh, some messages like in taxis, uh, discussing like you have to help someone uh, cross, cross the road of, yeah. if uh, a pregnant mother boards yeah. the taxi give them uh, that seat you know so small yeah. things that are Making supposed each to one be comfortable in their own space exactly yeah. are supposed yeah. to be embedded in the in, in the transportation system but from the society perspective okay now robert before you come in, i think we let us first have this particular video where we have a kampala schools learn about road safety then we come back robert will uh, think come in that question For those who are 
couple of activities, and I think there was Buganda Road mm -hmm. in particular. Now, uh, Robert, you had something to ask before we... Yes, uh, I wanted to ask Amanda that, you know, you've focused so much on road safety and mindset change. But practically, to go on ground, it involves infrastructure. Roads do not have road furniture. Uh, to indicate even a one way, some of the roads in Kampala, you only know that you're in a one way when you're stopped by a police officer. You don't even have the sign. So do you think that this has become a priority even of the planners? Because I, when I look at Kampala Capital City Authority, for example, how would you say, for such and such, we are going to work on this road. We received money from the World Bank. We are going to work on this road. But most of all these roads, uh, inclusion of everybody is not part. I've not seen anywhere in the plan come this year, this financial year. Mm -hmm. Next financial year, I'm not so much sure. But when I see that engineer Chitaka's budget and plan for the roads going to be made, there is not even any where we see people with disabilities prioritized. Do you think the plan, because some of these roads have financial implications. Constructing a normal road for vehicles, repairing it would be cheaper mm. than if you are going to have a walkway, than if you are going to have a road that has a path for people with disability. Yeah, actually what Robert is saying is quite true that in, in, in the fight for you people to try and mm. put things in order, you have another repulsive mm. agency, maybe the planners, the implementers have not done enough. Look at the walkways, very small, Look at, they look at beautifying the road more than creating space for people to walk. <laughs> they plant trees in the middle of the road, grass, almost a full end. But and no one cares is for... expensive. Yes. For example, well, pedestrians, they don't put in protection, uh, those, you know, those kind of things. Yeah. Because make a road design more expensive. Off. But seriously, mm. it's all about prioritization. Prioritization is not easy. Usually, people tend to, planners tend to focus on the loud people mm. now in this case like the middle income class mm. so motorists mm. tend to get a lot of favors and this has been happening over a long period of time that they are favored by, by design mm. by uh, plans and that's why projects like IC mist are very important that there has to be a shift mm. if you have a 60 percent population that is walking in mm. your city why should you uh, invest 80 percent of the budget in the 10% of the private car users. Yes. Uh, th there is an imbalance. If you have 60% working population, mm. it means that at least 80% of your for, budget should, should go to the, the, the working population yes. mm. to make it safe. Um, infrastructure, which you've talked about, mm. it's beyond infrastructure, I'm telling you. Mm. Go to Makere University where I work. There is a problem at the gate there. Mm. Mm. Th there are bollards to prevent border borders mm. from... Uh, crossing, mm. but they removed some and they still go through them. And that point is meant for pedestrians to mm. cross. Infrastructure is there. The walkways go to um, uh, Le Road, go to Nakasero Road. You will see that the walkways have been taken over. Yeah, good, sure. with, good width, actually. Sure, yeah. So infrastructure alone is absolutely not enough before you fix the mindset, the infrastructure will not make any sense. Okay. You will still have uh, people being knocked in their right zones. Um, you've talked about the one-way system, the signage. Mm. That's part of this project. There has to be an inclusive approach. Mm. And the best way to include everybody is to actually include them in the planning process. That's mm. why we have this uh, kind of idea in our concept. Mm. You know, before you move in a wheelchair, you will not know where you can't go. Okay. It's only when you are in that wheelchair that you will discover. The limitations. So it's important, for instance, to engage the disabled as we design these roads. Because you don't know, you have They're not been disabled. The position, yeah. yeah. If you are, you are on a walkway, you are able to jump, put mm. your foot the other side. But this person is in a wheelchair. Um, a child, you were a child. You said mm. you were at uh, Nakasero mm -hmm. Primary School. Mm -hmm. Of course, you were also behaving like these uh, school children. At that point, yeah. And you were crossing these roads when they were not in this kind of state. This is the urbanization effect now. Actually, by then, there was so much of road safety knowledge. I remember it was common in school. They would bring us out, look right, look left. But now look you right look again. right and look left. If it's one way, you look right. 
Hmm. And then the border is coming, coming from, from the, the other side. This yes. is how this child of Ghana Road Primary School was knocked down. Hmm. Hmm. Because the border came from the other side, and hmm. this child was actually looking in the right direction. Hmm. So you see, that again is not about signage. It's hmm. about the mindset the of that rider. And also I think uh, Amanda regulations are important. Because we're looking at, and this has been the biggest challenge to urbanization or how controlling traffic. People here have not a lawless, maybe if I may use that word. Yeah. The, 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 the law enforcement has relaxed and, well, it's okay. But the borders will buy, will do whatever they want and all this. I think you have a challenge of uh, lawless. Yeah, but everything uh, reinforces the, uh, each other, you know? And yes, um, sure. For instance, if you use a zebra crossing, mm. but people almost want to knock you while you're there using yes. the right place, mm. what do you do? The next thing you just cross. Uh, at a wrong point because you know it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So yeah. this keeps on uh, uh, brings us um, back to the element, yeah. It becomes the like generic. It keeps reappearing in another way that you you discard all the rules because they mm. don't work anymore. So but, there has to be some strict enforcement. But mm. I believe that with the mindset change mm. and inclusive designs in mm. terms of communication to mm. the public, we are over assuming that the public is aware about these things. Yeah. Okay, Amanda, uh, for the two years of this project, yes. uh, if you make a brief assessment, away from registering uh, Namirembe road design, have you seen any mindset change? Have you seen anything fruitful to be proud of? The, the most important thing mm. for us is the children, those mm -hmm. children of Uganda Road and Bat Valley. Mm -hmm. That's a big number that we are dealing with. Mm -hmm. And this is the future. Again, this is about the whole project focus, mm -hmm. sustainability. These children will definitely not forget what we discussed with them. Mm -hmm. They will most likely share with the rest. Most likely, they will be better road users than those who did not benefit from, from this, this project. project. Mm -hmm. And also, we realized that KCC, for example, changed changed a bit their communication style about projects, mm -hmm. like using uh, art, mm -hmm. you know, paintings. Yes. And, and going on streets, you saw how they launched the Namirembe Road project. Mm -hmm. Tell me which project has been um, launched in that, this city like that, that one. Way, yeah. They printed maps, designs, placed them on the streets, called people, people asked questions, they mm. indicated for them this, this road is going to be closed, that road will be completely car free. Mm. And, and we see that it's already it happening, sense, yes. it's already making sense. Mm. Uh, the people that we worked with on the project are already interested in this topic. Oh. The journalists that we worked with oh. are writing. For instance, oh. uh, we worked with someone from the Observer uh, oh. called Elon. He's writing a lot about how we can use poetry oh. to improve road safety. You know, he's writing about uh, sustainable transport systems. Oh. You see that the impact is actually lasting. Yeah. We see oh. the media picking interest in these things. Uh, we had one aspect of the 3D crossing oh. for the road safety of Bat Valley. Uh, along Bombo Road. You know the 3D crossing mm -hmm. confuses the motorists as if they are real blocks. So when children are crossing, the motorist is forced to break suddenly mm -hmm. because you don't want to hit blocks. So we tested it for about six hours along Buganda Road, ar along uh, Bombo Road. And everybody was responsive. I remember a message from the current uh, ED, the acting ED KCCA. Mm. He said, wow, this is good. I was thinking of doing this for the city of Kampala. So you see that what, what, probably what, what, in their next designs, they will consider what, having What is this 3D zebra crossing thing? The 3D zebra crossing is kind of a, a, a I don't know how to explain <laughs> it. The, the, you see the real blocks. You see the white and black parts of the zebra crossing? Yes. Now, 3D is like a complete, it's a, it's a, it, it's not really a block, but it appears like a complete block. The way you would see this so you, tool there. Uh -huh. so the it way would, it is painted yeah. is in a 3D you, yeah. format. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, you would feel a way to that. hit something. Exactly. Yes. You see a full block in its size uh -huh. with, oh, all the, yes. with all the dimensions, and it appears real, but it's not. Not until you reach, you realize. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So people complained. Motori said, this will cause accidents. In fact, you can, Instant look, breaks. You can look it up on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. People reacted to it and said, this is dangerous. People will even get accidents. Then others are asking, why were you speeding mm. that much anyway? 
Yeah. Because that was a pedestrian crossing. So we see that it has generated... So if it was zebra crossings, could have the 3D? We would have a lot of... Uh, although that when people get used to it, to that location, they mm. just still come and fly. Mm. But the long-term solution is to train the mindset, the to change mm. the mindset of people. Can they imagine themselves as that child? The planners, can they imagine themselves as that poor person who walks mm. every day? Yeah. Uh, and can they imagine an old people? Where are old people in this city? Do you see them? No, 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 no. that's true. When you get old in this city, Mobility when it's is like very, this, very hard for you them. will stay in one place. Mm. So that's the kind of message this IC Mist uh, project it's was focusing to put, on. Yeah. To try out new things and implement them, like art, mm. um, storytelling, mm. 3D crossing, place yeah. making. Those are things that city authorities can actually start doing on mm. their own without incurring yes. any serious costs. Mm. Invite people from the general public to discuss uh, junctions. How does Kitugum House Junction treat pedestrians, for example? Yeah. Yeah. You will get a lot of uh, information that we can input in the design uh, process. Now, now we, 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 we see that uh, there's a bigger urban development picture, of course, but later on, how do we fit in all these processes to form part of the bigger picture? Uh, of course, in relation to planning, in relation yeah. to uh, how, how does how do the activities of uh, this particular project fit into the bigger picture? The activities um, of ICM is yes. implemented. Yes. You see, it's all connected to the urbanization process and yeah. its impacts, especially yeah. on urban mobility. Okay. The numbers, the congestion. So yeah. it's a, it's about trying to plan in an inclusive way, focusing on. Uh, walkways, focusing on bicycle lanes, uh, focusing on uh, improved traffic flow, and also making sure that the, the traffic situation in the city is not really um, affecting the quality of life of people. So the bigger picture pops up from the urbanization. The quality of our urbanization is not good. It's poor mm. because it's uh, unregulated, it's, uh, disorder, it's disjointed. Mm. So when we focus on uh, communicating in a creative and innovative way, transport mm. complexities, we are trying to uh, be in line with what is going on. Yes. Generally, mm. it's not only happening here. If you go to Gulu, mm. it's already uh, representing itself there. Mm. If you go to um, Arua, it's mm. also happening. Go to Barara, mm. it's mm. also happening. So, from the bigger perspective, is that this mm. is an urban. Uh, mobility related issue. issue and this issue to be addressed fully the bigger picture has to be known the vision has to be clear that there we need to have sustainable and inclusive urban mobility and everybody's role matters from the academician to the practitioner to the government. person public yes the yeah. government policymakers to make sure that we realign all our aspects not only road safety but improved air quality, improved the quality of public space, improved traffic flow, and better road user behavior. Amanda, uh, yes, there is a school of thought that believes, yes, all these are very good ideas, but uh, are they still applicable? <laughs> are you from personal discipline, road safety in our countries? Or should we look at, uh, for example, we have countries that shifted capital cities. You know, they said, okay, now, there's so much of a menace in Kampala. Yeah. If we can develop an alternative city, well planned, well regulated, what is your view about this? I'd love to know. Everybody is thinking about running away from this city. Hmm. But who, who made it what it is? I'm afraid it's us who want to run away. Hmm. So it's not about running, running away. away. It's, making it's about right. fixing it. Are they still fixable? Yeah. When you have because, a kids yeah. on, on water channels, fire guts are building, and uh, these sensitive pipes have been constructed upon, when you have but, a but, kids in the middle of the road. But you can see that, for instance, Kampala, mm. I walk a lot in this city. Mm. The walkways have, of course, the, the quality has improved, and mm. they have fixed them. The walking experience is not as good, but it's better than it used to be five years ago. Mm. So th that means that things are fixable. Mm. Uh, but, like I mentioned earlier, in, in the previous uh, mm. shows, 
focusing on Kampala as the capital alone and forgetting mm. the other urban centers is yeah. already a big mistake. Mm. It's risky. And what Kampala is doing, we, we should be expecting the other towns to be doing. If the walkways mm. are this wide here, they, they be could the be also not exactly this wide because then the population, population is not the same, mm. but they should also have some standard that they are good. They mm. are good quality. So we need to have standards mm. that uh, go across the country in all urban centers. Okay. And, and then we mm. We, we release the pressure oh. from this city. It's really overwhelmed, to be honest. Okay, we no, have no. to uh, stimulate growth in other cities and in terms of urban mobility. We really we need to reorganize not only Kampala, but, the but other even the other well. towns, the other cities. Mm. And that's where the, the project actually comes in. Because mm. mobility has a big impact on society and on the economy. All right. Even when you're wealthy, mm. you're driving every day you're spending more than you should on mobility. Sure. Mm. You, you know, you walk and you, you, you the, the air quality is so bad, you're already being affected, whether you're rich or poor. So mobility mm. is very sensitive and uh, governments, mm. uh, policymakers should really give it a good position in, mm. in the budgeting and investment. Okay, now, now Amanda, it's unfortunately running out of our time, but I'll give you a chance to give your conclusive remarks about the particular project and urban plan. Yes, so um, I see mist. That's what we call it, yeah. implementing creative methodological innovation, innovations for inclusive, inclusive. sustainable transport. Okay. Um, it's so much about urban mobility, but mm. urban mobility is a very big aspect of urbanization, mm. and most African cities require projects like, like this. That one. Mm. And in fact, it should be continuous. It should not have a, a, a timeline, it should not stop. The best is to see uh, city authorities take it up. We see academicians having another research style, mm. meaningful research, mm. not just reading and writing and publishing, but let's try to implement uh, what we actually <coughs> are proposing, like how we did it with the 3D, yeah. the place making. So it's possible for us uh, researchers to make a difference. Uh, as we collaborate with the planners. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Amanda, for coming. You're so welcome. much also for giving us a quite a mouthful of knowledge about planning. Thank now, you. of course, with that, we have come to the end of our GMU agenda, but again, we must re-emphasize that it's important for us to live in our space and enjoy it. Everyone, do what you have to do. Respect the road signs, pedestrians, motorists, cyclists, and all people who use the roads. Now we'll take a break, have our quarter of a day, and Ruben is also coming on to give us the sports updates. Good morning.